Great. Come on back. Let's do this thing. We have been spending the last three years in and out of the book of Acts. And today, we reach the finale. We come to the end of the book of Acts. And what a journey we've been on, quite literally, what a journey we've been on. We've been watching as the gospel movement spreads from Jerusalem through Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the known world. And what we've been asking, particularly this term, as we've looked at the second half of the book of Acts, is we've been asking, well, how does the gospel spread? And we've seen six things. We've seen Paul go where the going is good. In Acts 13, thirteen, he um, realizes that there wasn't much fruit happening among one community, the Jewish community at that point. And so he goes into the Gentile world with the gospel. We saw that we need to make the main thing the main thing. There are a whole lot of distractions theologically and in terms of practice that can get in the way of what God is wanting to do. The big issue for them was circumcision. Probably not a massive issue for us, but we looked at what that might say to us today. We looked at the fact that we need to praise in the pain, that as we step out for Jesus, as we take the gospel out, life's going to get hard at times. We saw Paul and Silas in prison. What did they do in prison? They worshipped. We saw how we need to worship, have a lifestyle of worship, whatever circumstances we go through. We saw we need to prepare for a fight, that we're in a spiritual battle. As you and I take the message of Jesus out into our communities, there are going to be things and people and spiritual forces that don't like that. We need to be ready for a fight. We need to follow the Spirit's leading. Going where he tells us to go. And we need to be willing to tell our story. That sharing the message of Christianity is not just something for a few people who get up on stage and play guitar or speak loudly and wave their hands. Sharing the message of Jesus is for all of us. If you're a follower of Jesus, you have a story. You have a story of his goodness to you. You have a story of his faithfulness to you. And your job is to share that story with others. It's good, right? This is what we've seen. We're going to see the seventh thing today, but we've been on a journey. In fact, we've been on three journeys with the Apostle Paul. This is his first missionary journey and takes around to Iconium and back again from Antioch. We went on his second missionary journey, which goes a bit further, goes to Macedonia and Turkey and uh, Greece and all those lovely areas. The third missionary journey takes him similar kind of location. Since the third missionary journey, that he, he said, the Lord has taken me down to Jerusalem. So he heads down to Jerusalem. What happens in Jerusalem? He gets arrested and he's in front of the governor, he's in front of Felix, he's in front of Festus and he's telling about what God called him to do and then he gets sent in front of the king, King Agrippa and he gets so hacked off with how his case is being handled, he goes, I want to go to the emperor. So he gets packed off on a ship across the sea, he has a massive storm, there's a shipwreck, he gets marooned on Malta, bitten by a snake, they think he's going to die, he doesn't die, they think he's a god, they start worshipping him as a god, he goes, I'm not a god, worship Jesus, they start worshipping Jesus, they, <laughs> they start that's healing their sick. He gets sent on to Rome. He takes a deep breath. He gets put under house arrest, awaiting trial. And we know from trial that that will end up with his execution. And this is how the book of Acts ends. Under house arrest. Acts chapter 28, just the last two verses. For two whole years, Paul stayed there in his own rented house and welcomed all who came to see him. He proclaimed the kingdom of God and taught them about the Lord Jesus Christ with all boldness and without hindrance. He's been shipwrecked. He's been arrested. He's been marooned. He's awaiting trial, which will eventually lead to his death. And what's he doing? He's having house parties where he tells people about Jesus. This is so characteristic of Paul's ministry. We see two things throughout the book of Acts in terms of Paul's ministry. First of this, God, he goes where God tells him to go. He goes where God tells him to go. In, in Acts 9, where he's just met the risen Jesus, he tells him to go into the city. Guess what? He goes. In Acts 13, while they're worshipping and praying, the Holy Spirit says, go, Paul, it's time for you to go to do the work I've called you to do. What does he do? He goes. In Acts chapter 16, he's on his missionary journey. He wants to go up north. The Holy Spirit says, you can't go up north, and sends a vision of a man out west. 
Where does he go? Out west. In Acts 20, the Spirit tells him to go to Jerusalem. He doesn't know what's going to happen, but he goes. This is Paul. Paul, God tells him to go to Jerusalem. So he goes to Jerusalem, gets put on trial, goes on a boat. And now, what's he doing? He's doing what the Lord's called him to do. Wherever he goes, wherever the Lord calls him to go, he goes and he sees it as an opportunity. You know, one of the most exciting things um, in my life at the moment is what God is doing among us in this church. I'm so excited about how God is leading us as a church. Um, a few weeks ago, a couple of months ago, we called the church to pray and fast about where God is calling us to go. And the, the thing that excited me, and to be honest, surprised me, is I said, as a leadership, we're calling you to pray and fast. And you guys went, yeah, all right. Sounds good. And that's what we've been doing. We've been asking God, where are you calling us to go? What are you calling us to do? And over that season, the Lord's been laying specific places on your heart. And the the key place that keeps coming up again and again and again is South Wixton. And so this last week, we went on a prayer walk on Monday night around South Wixton. There are 20 of us there. We were around different areas, split up in threes. We were praying for those different areas that God would bless them. We were asking him how he sees them, what his vision is for those areas, what he's doing there already. And we came back to the park, and in the park, we worshipped. We sang the blessing over South Wigston. It was so good, right? Those of us who were there, it was so, so good. And uh, amazing time. And then towards the end of this time, um, a bunch of youths, youths came up on their e-scooters and uh, with smirks on their faces. And I thought, godly, faith-filled guy that I am, oh, no. <laughs> There we go. <laughs> and we finish singing, and they roll up to us, and they say, what are you singing for? You Christians, can we sing with you? <laughs> what? <laughs> that was not what I was expecting. And so we sing, and Pete Scott goes over there with his mobile phone. He's got the lyrics, and these rough and ready youths that are singing the blessing with us as we sing it in the middle of South Wigston. And my mind is kind of blown by this point. And then we go over and have a chat with them. And I say, what's it like living in South Wigston? And they tell us some good things, and they tell us some bad things. What do you do do for for fun? We just hang around. There's no youth clubs or anything here, and... Not really. There is one, it turns out, but you have to pay to go to it. And so they just hang out on the park and chat and do what they do and play football and get into trouble. And and I just said, well, if there was a youth club here in South Wigston, free to go to table tennis, football, snooker, pool, Xbox, whatever, would you be interested? Oh, yeah, of course I would. I don't know where that conversation is going to go. I've got no idea where that's going to lead, but I know this. If we hadn't made the time to go, God, where are you calling us to go? What are you calling us to do? We wouldn't have gone to South Wixon on that prayer walk. If we hadn't gone to South Wixon on that prayer walk, we wouldn't have ended up in that park singing on that night. And if we hadn't ended up in that park singing that night, we wouldn't have met those young people. And there was not a hint of mocking. They wanted to know what we were doing, why we were doing it. And what they were looking for, I think is community. I don't know where that's going to go, but I know if we weren't listening to God, we wouldn't have gone. And I wonder if it might start with football in the summer. Taking a football and just seeing what happens. So if you're up for that, come find me afterwards. Let's have a chat. You don't have to be good. I'm not good. In fact, I'm very bad. But um, I quite like the idea of getting to know some young people and telling them about Jesus. But I wonder what God is calling you to do, where he's calling you to go. We've talked about us as a church. I think some of you know what God is calling you to do, and something's holding you back. I think you know, you know where he's calling you to go, and you're just not quite ready to make that step. My experience and the experience of the life of Paul seems to be, it might not be easy, but it will be fun. And God will use you as you go. But I think for a whole load of us, we just don't ask the question. 
because life is so busy. We just get on with our life and getting on the roll of doing what we're doing and the, the conveyor belt of life and school runs and meal plans. And then you come to church on Sunday and maybe a small group and it just starts all over again. And we don't take the time to stop and go, God, what do you want me to do? Where are you calling me to go? Who are you calling me to go to? And here's my encouragement for you as we start the summer. I think it'd be very exciting if you start asking that question. We've been praying and fasting for where God's sending us. What if you prayed and fast for where God was calling you to be? And it might be your next door neighbor. And it might be your college. And it might be your workplace. It might be your family. But it'd be exciting if you started asking, wouldn't it? Paul always went where God called him to go. Secondly, it goes without saying, he shared his faith constantly. Didn't matter whether he was in the marketplace or in the temple. It didn't matter whether he was with the Greeks or the Jews. It didn't matter whether he was in front of the kings or in front of people who had no money at all. It doesn't matter if he'd just been shipwrecked and left on an island in Malta and now he's under house arrest in Rome. He just proclaims the kingdom of God. Wherever he went, he was always talking about Jesus. And it wasn't easy. Look what he says, now compelled by the Spirit, I'm going to Jerusalem, not knowing what will happen to me there. I only know that in every city, the Holy Spirit warns me that prison and hardships are facing me. If you start to ask the question, God, where are you calling me to go? What are you calling me to do? Who are you calling me to go to? It's not always going to be easy. In fact, I can promise you at times it will be hard. Let me show you what I mean. Sam, come out, please. Come here. Hey, Sam. I've asked you if you want this, right? Yeah. Do you want it? Yeah. Here's the mic. Say for the, for the mic. Yeah. Great. Um, and I want to give you this, but I don't want to give it to you yet. Come on, give it back. You've got to earn it. So can you just go stand over there by Giles for me? Uh, I've got a little obstacle course for you. If you get to the end of the obstacle course, Sam... You can have the chocolate. So what you're going to do is you're going to run to here, and then you do five press-ups in a minute. Five press-ups. And then Jack, come on out. And then you're going to run to Jack here, and you're going to stand still. Um, Jack's going to stand I'll, I'll demonstrate. You, you can be Sam for a second, while Jack throws a tennis ball at your head ten times. Okay? Like that. Sound good? Okay. And then you're going to run... Sophie, come out, please. Then you're going to run here, where Sophie's going to throw a cup of water in your face. <laughs> and then Luke, can you come out? And then you're going to run here, where Luke's going to put his finger in his mouth and put it in your ear, which is commonly called a wet willy. Yes, thank you very much. And then you're going to come here and you're going to have the microphone and you're going to sing Bar Bar Black Sheep for us. Yes? And if you do that, you get the bag of chocolate. Sound good? Are you going to do it? You're going to do it? Come on, let's give you some encouragement. Okay. So first step. Here, five press-ups. Go. We'll count you. One, two, three... Four, five, very good. Now to the next person. The table tennis ball to the head. One, two, three, four, four, four. Five. We've got five more. I'll stand behind. I can be your backstop. Six. Seven. Eight. There's one cup of water. Nine. <laughs> Last one. Ten. Okay, very good. Sam coming through. Sophie, it's all yours. There we go. Thank you. Okay, over to Luke. <laughs> and last one. Wait. This is the one you were looking forward to. Shall we sing it with him? 
Bob a black sheep to a new and he wool. Yes, sir, yes, sir, three bags full. One for the master, one for the dame. One for the little boy who lives down lane. Samuel! Well done. Thank you, well done, well done, my wonderful helpers. The enthusiasm with which Luke Pierce said he wanted to stick his wet finger in Sam's ear was slightly disturbing to me. <laughs> Here's the thing. If you decide you're going to live your life for Jesus, sometimes you will get tired at those press-ups. Sometimes it will be annoying, like getting balls thrown in your face. <laughs> Sometimes it'll be shocking. And you're like, Whoa, where did that come from? As you face opposition. Sometimes it'll be unpleasant. <laughs> and sometimes it'll be embarrassing. Because you'll have to step out in faith. <laughs> so why, Sam, did you do it? Because he wanted the chocolate. Because <laughs> he wanted the chocolate. And now, compelled by the Spirit, I'm going to Jerusalem, not knowing what will happen to me. I only know that in every city, the Holy Spirit warns me that prison and hardships are facing me. However, I consider my, wife, my life worth nothing. Not my wife. Very much not my wife. <laughs> it's going well, isn't it? <laughs> However, <laughs> I consider my life worth, gosh, worth nothing to me. <laughs> my only aim is to finish the race, to complete the, the task the Lord Jesus has given me, the task of testifying to the good news, is, news of God's grace. Paul said it's going to get hard. And we know it got hard for him. But he said, I'm part of something bigger. I'm part of something bigger. If you ask God, what are you calling me to? Where are you calling me to go? How are you calling me to live? And if you go for it, it will get hard. But it will be worth it. Did you know that you are part of the biggest movement in the history of the world? And people have been trying to trample it down for two millennia. The Romans, they tried to squash it before it started. Guess who ain't here anymore? It's the Romans, right? Communist China have tried to kick Christianity out. Do you know that the church in China is one of the biggest in the world today? Atheism has said that Christianity is irrelevant and outdated. And people will stop worshipping. Do you know, 50 years ago, there were more atheists alive than there are today. It's in decline. In 50 years, the last 50 years, Christianity has doubled. 1.2 billion more Christians today than 50 years ago. The church isn't in decline, friends. We are part of the single greatest movement in the history of the world. We are part of the thing that is growing and growing and growing and will keep on growing until Jesus comes back again. And you are part of it. Jesus said, what did he say? I will build my church and the gates of hell will not overcome it. We are the rock that Daniel saw in his vision, not cut out of human hands, that grows and grows and fills the earth. And you are part of it. And the call, church, is for you to rise up and take your place in the movement that God started all the way back and is still going now. And he has a part for you to play. With all of the stuff going on in your life and all the weaknesses you feel, he has wired you uniquely with different gifts and different passions and different abilities. With a circle of friends, you can reach people I can't reach. You can share the love of Jesus with people I can't share the love of Jesus with.
there is a calling on every person in this room to go where God is calling you to go if we would ask the question. How does the gospel spread? We've looked at these six. The seventh one is invest your life. I don't know how many years you have left. It may be loads. Are you going to invest it in something eternal? Or are you going to invest it in stuff that doesn't make it into eternity? You've got a choice, church. We've got a choice. And every day, the pull of the world would have us focus our eyes on the here and now. And yet what I think Jesus is wanting to do today is to lift our eyes to the big picture of what he's doing and what he's called us into. And go, come on, there's something bigger for you. There's something better for you. You can be part of something I'm building that is eternal. Young people, you might class yourself as a young person, you might not. I'll leave that up to you. But I want to say this to you. You can invest your life into something that matters eternally. Have a life of real significance if you give your life to Jesus, say, I'll go wherever you want me to go. But how do we do this? Maybe Philby, if you want to come up. How do we do this? Because I just feel like little old me. I'm sure you do too. How do we fulfill this calling? How do we go where God's called us to go and do what he's calling us to do? Well, I think it hasn't changed from week one of the series of Acts, which is this. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, to the ends of the earth. You don't need me or another sermon as, as lovely as sermons are. If you want to be all that God wants you to be and do all that God has for you, you need power. You need the Holy Spirit. And we're never going to move on from that. If you want to be Jesus' witness in Wigston and South Wigston and Lutterworth, on Bolter Crescent and in your workplace, in your family, in your school, and in your college, what you need more than anything else is the refilling of the Holy Spirit who will give you the courage, who will give you the boldness, who will give you the wisdom, who will give you the vision to fulfill what he's calling you to do. And so what I'd like for you to do is to say you're going to invest your life, but that might feel quite big for you. So let me say this. Why don't you invest your summer? Some of the time where everything slows down. Some of the time where we take a break and we stop the rotors and we do church on the park and it's wonderful and glorious and great and kids' work stops, all that kind of stuff. It's so good. But it's also a time where we can get spiritually quite lazy. And here's what I want to suggest to you at the beginning of this summer. Start asking God, what do you have for me? What is your vision for my life? Where do you want me to be? And would you give me the courage to go? Church, if you're comfortable to stand, would you stand? And I want to give us a chance to respond. We've got 13 minutes before we get the kids back in. And then we can keep going after that. And if you give us something, Phil, give us something in the background. Maybe you've run dry. Maybe you're going, I don't know what God's calling me to. Maybe you're going, I do know what God's calling me to and it scares me. Or maybe you heard that phrase, break my heart for what breaks yours and you went, my heart is already broken. And not in a good way. And what you need today is actually some healing.
I want us to have an opportunity just to invite the Holy Spirit to come and minister to us today. How do you want to do it?